can start the discussion. So last time uh, we saw that uh, if you have a bunch of sensors that all have the same standard deviation and they're all unbiased, then maximum likelihood estimate tells you that you should take uh, the mean of all the readings uh, as uh, uh, the estimator and we showed that uh, um, if you also use it to estimate the variance of the sensors, uh, you get slightly biased uh, estimation because uh, uh, the variance is uh, 1 over n time, times uh, sum of the squares of the so the variance uh, was uh, uh, estimation of the variance, uh, uh, let's call it EV, estimation of the variance is sum of xi minus x bar squared divided by n. And we know that this is uh, slightly biased because uh, an unbiased estimator needs uh, n minus 1. Yeah, this is what we saw. Okay, so this is when you have identical, uh, identically distributed independent uh, uh, measurements, <coughs> but in practice, your uh, measuring uh, devices will have different variances. Uh, so this can apply to sensors, for example, because in wireless sensor networks, you can deploy them by literally throwing them out uh, of a plane, and so they will land on different uh, in a different situations, so uh, the, which will impact their uh, variance, uh, the variance of their readings. Uh, or, for example, if you are, if your sensors are actually humans who say rate uh, um, conference papers uh, or. Uh, for peer marking, right? Uh, then, of course, every human uh, has uh, uh, different um, different variants of uh, uh, his or her uh, estimations. So, this is our next uh, setup. So, we assume that we have sensors um, sensors S1, S2 up to Sn. Uh, we assume that they are unbiased uh, um, and uh, we assume that their respective variances are V1, V2, up to Vn. And you assume that they say that you calibrated your uh, sensors in a lab using a reference high precision instrument and uh, uh, using several measurements and using the previous formula that we had on the board, you estimate the variances of all of the sensors. And then you measure a quantity and you get measurements x1, x2, up to xn of the same quantity. So, for example, uh, the variance of this sensor can be, say, 0 0.01. Uh, variance of this sensor can be 0 0.1. And, say, variance of this sensor can be large, can be some tail. And one would kind of uh, expect that the best way to measure the quantity is simply to take the most accurate uh, instrument, right? But as you will see, uh, in fact, uh, you don't throw away any information. You use even the measurements of uh, the sensors with highest variances uh, um, to produce the most accurate uh, estimation. So let's see in this setup uh, what would uh, maximum likelihood estimation tell us to do. So what is the likelihood uh, that uh, um, we have these uh, uh, measurements. Uh, well, uh, assuming that the errors are independent and normally distributed. Uh, so this we will, in fact, in practice, we often 
make assumption that uh, the errors in this normally distributed. Uh, do you know why it's okay to make such an assumption? Uh, why is it okay to assume that uh, the errors are approximately normally distributed? Uh, yes? Right, so if you have large, so the idea is that uh, if certain quantity is sum of a large number of random variables, so uh, a large number of factors can impact uh, uh, your measurements uh, and you take a mean, uh, then uh, um, the error will uh, kind of converges in a sense that can be made strict to a distribution that is a normal distribution. This is called the central limit uh, theorem and it's extremely important. So whenever something depends on many, many factors, it's very likely that uh, uh, it will be uh, normally approximately normally distributed. So because the errors are independent, the likelihood will be just the product of square root 2 pi, and then here is variance uh, vi, oops, so it will be the product when i goes from 1 to n, and then here you have, because it's a normal distribution, t to the minus uh, xi uh, minus mu squared divided by 2 times variance. Usually you see this as uh, sigma i squared, but uh, since we deal with variances here, it's more convenient uh, to write it in uh, uh, this form. So these are, so how can we write this uh, to simplify it? Well, uh, this is uh, product i equals 1 to n, 1 over square root uh, 2 pi pi i uh, times, and then when we multiply this, we get a sum, right? So it will be e to the minus uh, sum xi minus mu squared divided by, um, by uh, 2 vi. So uh, this is just putting all these things uh, uh, together. So maximum likelihood, we simply have to find the extremal point um, um, of... Uh, Just a question there. Yes. You put the sum on the top of the fraction, but shouldn't the sum be over the whole fraction? Because VI is dependent on I, which is what you said. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So it is uh, like this. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, so and here is i equals one uh, to n. So let's now see for what when v uh, l over d uh, mu is equal zero because that's the only unknown quantity. Xi's are results of our experiments. Vi we obtained by testing the sensors in the laboratory. So to set this equal to zero would mean, uh, so this is all a constant, right? So you have, uh, um, Let's see, what do you have to get? And this is not equal to zero. So when we differentiate, we get the derivative of this it's itself, which is not equal to zero times, and then you have, uh, uh, when I differentiate, this two comes down and cancel this uh, 
uh, two on the bottom. So this is equivalent to saying uh, that uh, sum i equals from 1 to n of, and we are left here just with xi uh, minus mu divided by vi uh, is equal to 0. So now, right when you differentiate e to something, it's e to the that something times the derivative of the exponent, uh, which is exactly this. So what do we get now? We get that um, uh, sum of uh, uh, xi divided by vi minus uh, sum of uh, 1 over vi times mu is equal to 0. And then this gives you, of course, that mu is equal to sum of xi, or let me write it this way, 1 over vi times xi divided by sum of 1 over vi i equals from 1 to n, right? Or uh, a little bit in a even nicer form is sum i equals from 1 to n, 1 over vi divided by sum of, say, 1 over vj, uh, j equals from 1 to n times xi. So you see, maximum likelihood estimation tell us that the quantity you are measuring is a weighted mean of the measurements of all sensors in which each measurement of each sensor is taken to be proportional to the reciprocal of the variance. Right? So if a sensor has large variance, this reciprocal will be very small. And so this measurement will be taken with a smaller weight. If the variance is small, then this factor will be relatively large compared to the sum of all the reciprocals, right? And the impact of that measurement uh, uh, will be much larger. But notice, uh, there is no exclusion of outliers. We don't try to figure out which sensors are off. Uh, we take into account all the measurements, uh, but we weigh them uh, according to the reciprocal of the variance of the sensor. Right? So that's extremely useful uh, thing to know. Uh, so you don't throw away um, any, uh, any measurements. If uh, you have humans marking, say, uh, papers, if you had a record of their past experience, how well they did the job, then again they will take, uh, they will get, rather than just taking a simple mean of their marks, you would prorate uh, each uh, uh, mark by the variance of this uh, uh, rate, right? So how, what is the variance of our um, estimator? Uh, so the variance uh, is uh, expected value of uh, our, of the difference uh, i equals from 1 to n, 1 over, uh, let's now write it in more compact form, xi over vi divided by sum of 1 over, say, vj, j goes from 1 to n, right, uh, minus uh, mu uh, squared, 
Uh, so this is uh, expected value of uh, uh, what do we have? Uh, we will have uh, sum of xi minus mu divided by vi uh, divided by uh, well, sum of 1 over vj j goes from 1 to n squared and so let's see what we get There's a question Yes Can you put mu? You haven't shown that your estimator is unbiased Ah, that's very good We didn't show that estimator is unbiased but it is uh, So a digression uh, let's show that the estimator is first unbiased. So let's see what is the expected value of uh, sum of xi divided by vi, uh, all divided by sum over vj, um, and then uh, so this is equal. Uh, expectation is linear operator, so it goes through, and you get uh, uh, expected value, sum of expected values of xi divided by pi over sum of 1 over vj. j equals from 0 to n, i equals from 0 to n. And we assume that our uh, uh, sensors are unbiased, so the expected value of, of each of these is mu. So we get that this is equal uh, uh, sum of mu over vi divided by sum of reciprocals of vj, and of course this is equal to mu, so our estimator is unbiased. So, um, let's see. Okay, my goodness, this is sitting here since last time. So let's now compute the variance. expected value of uh, sum of 1 over vj, j equals from 1 to n squared. And if I multiply this, uh, I get uh, sum over i j um, xi minus mu divided by v i uh, times x uh, j minus mu divided by v j, right? Now, because uh, x, the errors are uh, independent, right? They're independent uh, variables, error of one sensor doesn't depend on the error of the other of another sensor. Whenever i is not equal to j, so we have uh, this is equal. Whenever i is not equal to j, this is obviously zero, right? Because the errors are independent, so thus uncorrelated. Uh, expectation of this is just product of the expectations because they are independent and because they are unbiased, each of these uh, is equal to zero. So this is actually equal 
just when they are equal, so sum i equals from 1 to n, xi minus mu uh, squared divided by vi, so expected value of this Uh, squared on the bottom, very good. Uh, so divided by sum over j equals to 1 to n of uh, 1 over vi and then uh, squared. Now if you pass with the expected uh, value inside, this is, uh, let me see, C, I am, sh ah, no, that's okay, so this, no, 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 am I messing? Uh, that's a I and a J, like, okay. Sorry? Like, I'm a bit confused, like, how can you multiply this I term and the J term? Like, so uh, how do I multiply yeah. this? Yeah, why? So this is sum of these factors, if you square it, uh, you have to multiply each of these with uh, every other, right? So you get, uh, now when the indices are different, uh, uh, then uh, um, but when the indices are different, uh, uh, then this is zero. When it, indices are the same, that's precisely what you get, right? Okay, so I think actually I am doing okay, so let's see. Now expected value of each of these is just vi. Yeah? So on top I get sum vi divided by vi squared, and on the bottom I have sum of one over vj, and then squared, now this cancels this, and I get that this is uh, sum of 1 over vi divided by sum of 1 over vi squared. And if you cancel it, this is just 1 over sum of 1 over vi, right? Which happens to be 1 over n times harmonic mean of uh, all uh, variances, uh, right? Because what is harmonic mean? Harmonic mean would have n on top and this uh, reciprocals. Uh, so this is actually the variance of the estimator is 1 over n times the, in a sense, a mean variance, uh, harmonic mean, uh, uh, of the variances of all the sensors. Uh, so it's actually rather small. So now, the question is, uh, can we do any better? Maybe if we somehow mix up the variances in a more clever way, maybe we can get an estimator who ha which has uh, even smaller variance. Uh, well, it turns out this is not the case because this variance here is exactly the lower bound of the variance of any unbiased estimator. And it is called the Kramer Rao in this particular setup. It's the Kramer Rao bound uh, lower bound for the variance of unbiased estimators under pretty general conditions, which you can read in the uh, lecture notes that I wrote. Uh, and you will see a proof of a theorem that uh, establishes uh, that you cannot beat uh, this variance. This is minimal possible variance, which means that maximum likelihood in this setup produces optimal estimate, right? So this is why whenever, the, as I mentioned last time, whenever the sample is large, uh, maximum likelihood produces uh, uh, optimal or near optimal 
estimation. Even if you don't meet the grammar rao bound, um, uh, it's, um, you are very guaranteed to be very close to it. Okay, so just to remember, if you have a bunch of sensors, you average their measurements, but not by simple arithmetic average, but a weighted average in which each measurement is taken with a weight, right? This is, uh, these all weights, the, 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 these guys all sum up to one, right? So with the weights that are proportional to the reciprocal of the variance of the sensor. Well, that's all very nice, but in practice, what do you think? What happens in practice? What's the drawback of this method? Huh? You see, in practice, we seldom have good estimates of the variances of the sources of information. For example, if I organize a conference, right, and I invite a whole bunch of people, uh, it's just, I don't know how, you know, to be referees, I don't know how accurate they are. Uh, so I even don't know whether they are unbiased and in all likelihood they are likely to be biased. Some people tend to be very negative when they evaluate other people's work. Uh, and um, uh, some people tend to be generous some people are just cannot care less to do good jobs, so they give almost random marks, marks that have very large variance. And unless you have a record of the past work of these people, you have absolutely no idea how good the sources of evaluation they are. But somehow you need to aggregate their outputs, right, their marks. And this is what iterative filtering algorithms try to do. They try to optimally aggregate information from sources with unknown variants. And how do they do that? Well, um, so they move to this board. We, it's a very a uh, simple but clever idea. Um, that unfortunately has uh, serious drawbacks as we are going to see. And uh, so I'm going to present you what's kind of classical in the <coughs> literature and then we will see the, um, a method that was developed uh, at UNSW by my uh, former students, uh, uh, but it's, that is still kind of work in progress. Uh, so um, it, it can be a good topic for uh, your project if you are interested in these things. So, um, assume, <coughs> so let's see the setup. So assume that you have a bunch of uh, uh, referees. And let's, for simplicity, this is not necessary at all for the algorithm, but just for simplicity of notation, uh, assume that uh, each referee, let's call it uh, R, I produces marks uh, M, I, J uh, of uh, um, of uh, uh, paper uh, P, uh, J. So we will assume <coughs> that every referee uh, evaluates every paper. Of course, this is never the case, but uh, just to avoid the hassle of uh, uh, kind of uh, cumbersome notation, let's just, uh, nothing changes significantly uh, when you assume otherwise, so let's uh, uh, take uh, this uh, to be the case. So this is what you have. Each referee submits uh, his marks 
for each of the papers. Huh? And you have to <coughs> aggregate them somehow optimally. But you don't know the variances. You would like to use something like maximum likelihood, but you don't know the variance of the referees. So the trick is uh, to iteratively try to simultaneously obtain uh, estimates uh, of the variance and estimates of the true mark, so to speak, that the paper deserves. Uh, so our algorithm will be recursive. Um, and the idea is uh, uh, start with, uh, uh, I think we call them raw, so uh, with uh, a raw that corresponds to better paper J simply as a simple mean of all marks over all uh, referees divided by the number of uh, referees M. So let us assume that we have uh, so N referees and say M papers. Right, so we first start with the very coarse estimate of the mark of the paper simply as it's usually done, simply taking the mean of the marks of all referees. And let's call this zeroth estimation of the true mark of the paper. Now that we have this as estimate of the true value, we can form a rough estimate of the variance of each of the referees. So we can now form variance vi of the referee of round zero to be simply, uh, the, uh, so it's simply the sum of his marks, right, over all j's, right? So here we have uh, all of j equals 1 to m, right, minus uh, rho j uh, 0 and then squared, right? So first you start by roughly estimating, our goal is to get as objective estimation of the uh, true values, rho, right, as possible. So we start with a simple estimation of true values, taking all the referees uh, equally, essentially giving all of them weight 1 over n, right? And we simply take the mean of the marks, right? Now, with this as the current value the current estimate of the truth, we can estimate the value of the variance of each mark. So now we can refine uh, rho j. Yeah? We can now take rho j to be uh, sum uh, vi zero, this will be rho j1, uh, sum of, uh, uh, sorry, sum of 1 over uh, vj0 uh, times mark, uh, uh, sorry, we, we, we use i's uh, for the, so m, I j divided by sum of all reciprocals, uh, say vk0, k is equal from 0 to n, and here i is equal from 1, uh, oops, 
uh, from one up to n. Alex? Yes? Uh, okay, that's a very good, very good um, uh, point. Uh, m minus 1 is kind of justified, and in fact, we can put it here, because indeed, this is just a simple mean, so in fact, we can put m minus 1 uh, here. But in the second round, this will no longer be mean. So there is no equal justification why m minus 1 is more justifiable than m. But the good news is when m is reasonably large, this will not make a big difference. But that's a very good point. Uh, yes. Very good. Uh, so now you have a better estimate of the true ranks. Uh, so now what you can do, you can estimate variances once again, and uh, you get that this will be sum j equals from 1 to m um, of uh, m i j minus uh, rho j uh, 1, and then squared divided, well, now here it can be either m minus 1 or m. Uh, this is no longer the mean, so there is no very good reason to put m minus 1, but it doesn't change uh, uh, anything much. Uh, right, in fact, this will be, this ratio will be equal for all, so when I substitute here, it will cancel out here and here. So it's the same whether you take uh, uh, m minus 1 or m. And you keep iterating until, hopefully, the marks uh, stabilize. So it's a very neat idea. We first estimate the true values by a simple mean. We use this simple mean as kind of temporary gold standard to compute, the, to estimate the variances of each user. Then we form, instead of simple mean, we form an approximate maximum likelihood estimation because we, uh, in zeros are just approximate variances. But this will be more accurate than that because you see, if uh, 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 if I use it as an outlier, 